At the start of the film, a farmhouse is shown. In that farmhouse, it was nighttime, and a bright light shone through. This gleaming light is nothing else than a magical creature. When the farmer wakes up in the morning and discovers somebody has spoiled his farm, as a result, the landlord rags since everything occurred as a consequence of that light. The farm owner calls his three sons and instructs them to guard the farm. Here we observe the owner's youngest son, John, who is regarded as an idol by all. His older brothers benefit from his kindness. John's brothers ask him to guard the farm. Alone, John agrees and prepares to guard the farm. On his own, John hears a strange voice while sitting alone. On the farm, a white horse stood behind him when he turned around and looked back. John couldn't believe what he was seeing. When he saw such a large white horse, he now tries to grab the horse by tying a rope to it. That horse begins to run, but John maintains a firm grip on the ropes. This is why John is being moved with that horse. The horse becomes unbalanced and falls into a swamp as it moves forward. John helps the horse in getting out of the swamp. Meanwhile, John realizes the horse's eyes are filled with tears. John feels terrible and promises that he will never come near this farmhouse again. The horse thanks John and departs. When John returns home, he hears a sound again from his farm. When John goes there to check, he is shocked to see two horses chained there. Before he can understand anything else, a voice tells John that this is a gift for him. When John turns around and looks back, he sees a tiny horse named Foal. In fact, Foal was the son of the horse that John had saved the night before. Foal informs John that my mother is really happy with you. That is why she has sent you a gift, John feels. Happy after hearing this, John, on the other hand, hears his father's voice. John comes out and tries to keep his father outside, preventing him from entering. Following his father's departure, John sits on. Foal. Foal runs quickly, and John is shocked. By his speed, Foal whistles as he reaches a point, and two horses come from the stable after hearing his whistle. John thinks he will sell these horses at the market. When John takes these horses to the market, people are shocked by their beauty. No one has ever seen such splendid horses like this. Many people talk about buying these horses from John. Foal also advises John to sell the horses to the older man. John, on the other hand, wants to sell these horses to the king. When the king arrives, he is fascinated with the horses, but his minister believes they are stolen horses. The king takes advantage of this and takes John's two horses without payment. When John talks about the money, he remains silent and leaves. John is scolded by Foal, who says, I've already told you to sell these horses to that old man. When Foal notices him sad, he whistles again, and the horses come back to him. The king's carriage tips over due to these two horses. They are thrown into the flour sack. King grows ragged but he can't say anything because of the chamber, and asks John to set money for these horses. John sets high price for the horses, forcing the king's people to advise that he employ John for his work. Because if John lived here, the king would take revenge for his insult. John accepts the king's offer and begins working for him. Now the king's assistant advises him to call a phoenix bird by John, which was a firebird and difficult to bring. According to king's assistant, calling the bird is difficult, and John would never be able to 
Do it. In the meanwhile, you would sentence him to death. King praises his assistant's idea and tells John about it. John also gets ready. When Fole learns of this, he warns John that it will be dangerous. Whoever did this or went in search of that bird never returned. John did not take a step back because he had accepted the challenge. Fole, too, wants to assist John, which is why he takes him into the forest. He shows him a dream nut and tells him that these are the fire bird's special nuts. And the bird enjoys them, but these are the nuts that, when eaten, cause the bird to fall asleep quickly. We were able to quickly capture the bird later on, and they reach the area where it lived. Fire birds live underground, according to Fole and they throw some nuts on the floor. They wait for the bird to come later, and when it smells the nuts, it comes out from the ground. The bird eats the nuts and faints shortly. Afterward, as John tries to capture the firebird, it rises to its feet and begins chasing him. As he rushes to catch John and Fole, the entire island catches fire. That firebird has captured Fole and John and John throws the last nut places in front of him. When the firebird eats that nut, he faints. When he wakes up the next morning, he considered himself chained by them. When John sees that firebird, he sees tears in his eyes, which makes him feel pretty bad for him. As a result, he frees the firebird. The bird flies away by opening his feathers as he releases. While on his way out, he gives one of his feathers to John, which was glowing from the heat. Fole assures John that the king would not forgive him now. However, John claims that seeing this feather will convince them that they have captured the firebird. When John goes to the king and king doesn't, believe in anything. The next day, John was brought for the death punishment. John displays the feather, but it is no longer shining, and the king orders to kill John. As the king orders his death sentence the firebird appears. Everyone is shocked after seeing him, and they all believe in John. As a result, the king must withdraw his death sentence. Additionally, the king gives promotion to John. This rags the king even more, so he asks his minister to devise a new plan. After much thought, the minister suggests that we send John to bring a mountain. Princess. Firstly, John wouldn't succeed and if he does, it is still in your favor. You could marry that princess you have the benefit on both sides. King really likes this idea and sends John on this mission. John finally makes it to the Sar Mountains, where the princess resides. He sees that on the mountain the way of getting into the castle is made up of a thick ice layer. It was quite tough to break that, and in the meantime, a firebird's feather comes, and the ice wall collapses, causing the remaining ice layer to break. A water flood comes, and Fole floats and falls in it afterward. Like a snowball, he drops down from the mountains. When John enters the castle, he notices a large number of girls, all of them were sleeping. It was extremely difficult to identify the true princess among them. However, when a firebird feather falls near a girl, John recognizes her as the princess. When John sees that girl's beauty, he becomes astonished, and he informs her that his king is interested in marrying her. On the other hand, the girl claims that if your king is so powerful, he would have come to take me. That girl jumps down from the mountain after saying this. John, too, is unconcerned about his own life and jumps down after the princess. Fole saves them both and carries them down. 
by riding them on his back. After observing John, Fole realizes that he begins to like the princess. Fole realizes that if the king finds out, it will be a problem for him. Princess was listening in on their talk secretly. She, too, thinks she's starting to like John. When they return to the king, everyone is amazed to see such a gorgeous princess. Now that he has seen John alive, King rags. But his followers try to understand him. That this is fruitful for him. Now they're promoting John, but he's not happy about it. He was worried about the princess, so he went to see her secretly. Before he can tell the princess anything, the king's people arrive and take her away. The king proposes the princess. She sets a condition to marry him. If he could bring the ring that belonged to her grandmother to the princess, that ring was lost in the sea. She will not marry until she receives the ring. Following this, King grows anxious, and John arrives. As he stands there, the king shoots him. Fole is asked about the ring by John, but he replies he doesn't know anything about it. Fole tells his mother about it. She informs him that the ring is in the whale's belly. That can be found near a small island in the sea. John goes with Fole, but he falls down due to a collapse with several birds around. It's revealed that John has reached the whale. John notices large chains in the sea, as well as a whale trapped in the chains. When John comes out, Fole informs him that the entire island is whale about Fole's mother. Has informed. John asks of the whale as to who has done this to him. The whale says that I have eaten some ships by accident. That's why the whale had been imprisoned by the other sailors. However, this whale now wants to correct its mistake. John is sad for the whale, and he has a plan. He believes that helping the whale in sneezing, he will be able to get everything out of him. According to the plan to go inside the whale's nose and tickle it. In the meantime, the whale sneezes, and all of the ships emerge from his stomach. Later on, the whale returns to the sea. Following the whale's departure, John is reminded of the ring and becomes sad. As a result of the whale's absence, a crab appears with the ring. He tells John that the whale has sent this ring for you because that whale knows about the heart's feelings. They later return to the princess. They take a look at the firebird that the king has tied to the building. When John gives the princess the ring, she knows that he can do anything for her. On the other hand, the king's man was peering through the microscope at Fole. He feels Fole as a devil when he listens to him speak. They all go there to capture Fole and the king also wakes up. When he spots him near the princess window, he shoots Fole, and John, despite his best efforts, was unable to save him. On the other hand, the king announces that John has been fired from his job as the princess's kidnapper. After a few days, he will be put to death. Meanwhile, princess meets Fole and informs him that he has been in difficulty as a result of her idea. She claims that to escape marriage, she has asked the king to shower in three different pots. The first pot will be filled with hot water, while the second will be filled with chilled water. The third pot, on the other hand, would have boiled milk. He informs the king that by doing this, they will be young once more. It doesn't seem good to the king. The king's man advises him to perform a test on John first. Princess warns Fole of an idea to avoid this. If they placed her grandmother's ring in the first pot, the firebird's feather is in the second pot, and 
The life and death flowers are in the third pot. John's life might be saved as a result. Foal asks about these flowers to the princess. Because of the ring, John can exit the the first section and enter the second. The firebird, who is watching everything, begins to scream. His voice reaches the enchained feather, which flies in and falls into the pot. John eventually falls into the third and final pot. Princess was anxiously awaiting the arrival of Foal. On the other hand, we see Foal reaching the flower. Before picking the bloom, Foal realizes that whoever does so will die. Regardless, he plucks the blossom. Everyone there believes John is dead, and they begin to leave sadly. Everyone there believes John is dead, and they begin to leave sadly. Foal appears and throws the flower into the pot. Later, John comes from the pot looking like a prince. The king after watching this jumps into the first pot as well. Instead of being young, he is trapped in a bubble and goes from there. Everyone is overjoyed, and they crown John as their new king. John and Princess go out in search of the foal. Foal thinks he's going to die, but Princess assures him that the flower was simply putting him to the test. In the last scene, we see the marriage of John with the princess and the movie ends here.